Okay, so we're going to start by talking about things that oscillate and things that vibrate. So number one would be a, a, a guitar string. So when you pluck a, a guitar string, that string is going to vibrate up and down with a certain frequency. And later we're going to talk about what do we mean by frequency. Okay, the second example there is of a pendulum. So if you have a, a string and then you attach uh, a weight to it and then you take the weight and you pull it out, it's going to go back and forth with a certain frequency. Uh, the next one I want you to see is something you can try at home and for this you're going to need a bowl and you can take a marble and put it on the bowl and let it go and it's going to go back and forth in the bowl and what's interesting is that if the radius of that bowl let's say is uh, six centimeters then if you were to take a string that is six centimeters long and then take a ball and put it on the end of that string it would go back and forth on that string at the same rate that that marble would roll in the bottom of the bowl so we'll find out why that would be true later okay then sound waves so that uh, if you have a, a, a tuning fork and you hit it with a hammer, then the, the tines of that tuning fork are going to do this. And so they're going to be vibrating with a certain frequency, and then that's going to produce a sound wave that is also going to have that frequency. Okay, then uh, a spring. So if you take a spring and then put a, a weight on the end of the spring and then you pull it down and you let it go, it's going to be oscillating up and down with a certain frequency. And then you've got atoms themselves. So in a uh, piece of material, uh, you are going to have atoms that, let's say that these are the atoms that are in that material. And then we know from unit number one uh, that these atoms are hooked together because of the force of electricity. And so that force of electricity was equal to a constant K, which depended on what the substance was, and then it was charge number one, and then charge number two, and then divided by R squared, where R was going to be the distance from this atom over here to this atom over here. Well, you can think of these forces, these electrical forces, as acting like little springs. So that connecting this atom to this atom, we can think of there as being a spring that's doing it. Now, it's not a real spring, but we can think of it as being a spring. And in the same way, in the previous problem, where you take a mass on the end of a spring and you pull it down and you let it go, it vibrates at a certain frequency. Well, if you start to uh, heat up these uh, atoms, they're going to start to vibrate. And they will be vibrating at a certain average frequency. And then uh, it, this is going to uh, store energy and then as this energy is released it will be released in the form of heat so even atoms can be considered to be little oscillating objects so how do we uh, describe uh, oscillations so the first one that we're going to do is frequency now frequency uh, is going to be given by in your textbook by the letter F for frequency. But unfortunately, in physics, that can also mean the focus of a lens. And actually, that's what I'm going to do. So that means I'm going to use a different letter to represent frequency. And that is going to be the Greek letter N, which is called nu. And so it's not one of these things, because that's going to stand for speed velocity. So it's more of a cursive type of a V and that's going to stand for frequency and it is going to be the number of oscillations something makes per unit time. 
Okay, so let's say that, for example, that you have a pendulum. So again, you take your string, you put a weight on the end of it, and so for this experiment, uh, you might want to use one that has a, has a string about this long. Uh, the, it turns out that the shorter the string is, the faster it's going to be going back and forth. So if you have a longer string, that's a little bit better. Okay, and now what you can do is you can pull out the pendulum, and then you can get out your stopwatch, and you can time it for, let's say, 10 seconds, and observe how many times does it go back and forth. And so that's going to be the number of oscillations, and then divide that by the amount of time that it took it to do it in, and then that's going to be the frequency. Now when I say oscillation, it's got to be the time it takes to go over here and then to come back. So an oscillation is not just over to here, but it's when it repeats itself. So the number of oscillations something makes per unit time is going to be called the frequency. And so one way of putting the unit for frequency, if it's number of oscillations per unit time, then the number of oscillations, that's just a number. 1, 10, 100 oscillations, but time is going to be in seconds, so it's going to be 1 over seconds is going to be the official metric unit for frequency. Or another way of saying that is s to the negative 1 power. Or another way of saying that is a hertz. So this is the way that we're going to write frequency hz, and then that's going to stand for hertz. So that is going to be the official metric unit for frequency. And it's going to be how often does an oscillator oscillate. Then you've got the period. So the period is going to be given by uh, what it kind of looks like a t, but it's going to be one of these kinds of t's that has hooks on it. And so this is actually a Greek letter T, uh, tau, and uh, this is going to be a capital T in the Greek letter system. And so if you see one of these kinds of T's, that's going to stand for temperature. So always remember to put hooks on it, uh, and then that's going to be the period. So the period is going to be the time it takes to make one oscillation. So again, you could do this with your string and with the stopwatch. So this time you're going to pull it out, and this time you're, when you click your stopwatch, you're going to let it go, and it's going to go back, and then it's going to come back over to here, and then you click your stopwatch again. So it's going to be the time it's going to take to make one oscillation. And so in general, uh, it's very, very hard in practice to do this because your reflexes aren't very good. So what a better way to measure the period is to let it swing back and forth, let's say 10 times, and then measure the amount of time it takes to, to do it in 10 times, and then divide them. So the total time divided by the num uh, total number of oscillations is also going to be the period, and then Notice that it's the opposite of the frequency. So the frequency was the number of oscillations per unit time, but the period was the amount of time per oscillation. So the, there's a simple formula that is going to relate the period to the frequency. So it's going to turn out that, let me put it over here, that the period is going to be equal to 1 over the frequency. And so could you rearrange that? So could you come up with another formula that would say that the frequency is equal to, okay, it would be 1 over the period, so that they're reciprocals of each other. The bigger the number gets that's in the denominator, the smaller the number that comes out of it. So the larger the frequency, the smaller the period. And the larger the period, 
the smaller the frequency. So that's a very good formula to know. And uh, another thing that you need to know about is the amplitude. So the amplitude is how large the oscillation is going to be. So in the first picture, it shows uh, a, a weight on the end of a spring. And so when you put that weight, so here's the ceiling, and then you got your spring, and then you put the weight on there, let's say that it naturally stretches the spring down to right here. Okay, that's the equilibrium point. That's where the weight normally wants to be. So if we were making a graph, that would be this line right here. That would be the equilibrium point. Now what we're going to do though is we're going to take this thing and pull it down a little bit further. So if we take this and now we stretch out the spring so it's down to here. And so when we click our stopwatch, that is going to be the amplitude. So right here is where the thing's going to start at. And then we let it go and we click our stopwatch and we could make a graph and then this would be showing where the weight is located at. Now notice that when you let it go, it doesn't just come back to right here. It overshoots it. So you can try this and the weight will actually go up higher and then it will start to come back down again. So that you're going to end up with a curve that's going to look like that. And so this is uh, going to be a, uh, a sine curve. Uh, actually, it's a cosine curve, but we refer to anything that has this kind of a shape as being a sine curve. And notice that it starts out with a large amplitude, and then the amplitude is going to go to zero, and then the amplitude goes to another maximum, and then it goes down. Now, do you remember there was something else that we had talked about that had this kind of a shape when we were talking about electricity and what was that? It was AC electricity, alternating current. So the, the, in that case it was the voltage and it was the current that was oscillating up and down with a certain frequency. Now the amplitude is not the distance from here to here. So the amplitude is defined to be this distance, so it's from wherever it's at its maximum or minimum to the equilibrium point. So that's the definition of the amplitude. If you want, you can measure it down here. So it makes no difference which way that you measure it, but it's not from peak to peak. So it's from a peak or a trough to the midway point, that's going to be defined to be the amplitude. And uh, another interesting thing about this is it's related to the energy. So if you, let's go back to this case here, it takes more energy to pull it down further, so that means it's going to have a larger amplitude. So the energy of an oscillator is going to be proportional to its amplitude. The greater the amplitude, the greater the amount of energy. Another way of thinking about this is like a if you're out on the beach and you get hit by a wave. Well, you could be hit by a wave that's this tall and it's not going to knock you off your feet. But then you could also be hit by a, a tsunami, which is like 100 meters tall. So that the greater the amplitude of the wave, the more energy that wave is going to have. All right, so here is a sample question. A pendulum swings back and forth eight times in two seconds. What was its frequency and what was its period? So first you're going to write down what you're given and what you're looking for. So we know that the number of oscillations was eight. We know that the, the amount of time it took it to do it in was two seconds. And we're looking for the frequency. So we're looking for this thing here, the frequency. So we're going to select the formula that connects the letters. And so this is going to be the frequency is equal to the number of oscillators 
divided by the amount of time. So it's going to be 8 divided by 2, and so that's going to be 4, and then we need to put the correct unit on there. So the official metric unit for frequency is the hertz, but if on the exam, if you wanted to say that it was 4 1 over seconds, or if you wanted to say that it was 4 seconds to the negative 1 power, that would be perfectly okay, but hertz is uh, the preferred metric unit for that. Okay, then for part B, we want to find the period. Now there's two different ways that we could have found the period. So here's one way. The period is equal to 1 divided by the frequency. So 1 divided by 4. So the frequency was 4 hertz. 1 divided by 4. So the number is 0.25. And then the official metric unit for period is the second. So a quarter of a second. Now the other way of doing the problem was to go back to the definition of the period, the amount of time divided by the number of oscillations, and so we would have taken this time, we would have taken uh, 2 divided by 8, but again we get the same number, 0.25, and then it would be seconds. So either way would be perfectly okay on the exam. All right, and so here are some typical frequencies of light waves. And remember that all light waves are electromagnetic waves, EM waves. And then also some typical frequency for mechanical waves. And so that's going to be given by the letter M. And so if you want to look through that, you can see uh, just how big and how small those numbers can get. All right, let's take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, the force of a spring.